Hey YouTube, it's Mal with Olympus Reptiles, and don't mind that beeping behind me. We know about it. It's our fault because we have an open rattlesnake cage right now. I don't know where the snake's at. Uh, actually, I do. Nothing's escaped. That would be terrifying. So what we've done recently is we've moved a lot of things around because we need to free up some caging for some of the things coming in. We have new caging coming in. If you remember, we showed you a video of our old school Neodache cages, right? Well, what went in there was a Massasagua, correct, and a banded rock. Well, there was a prairie in here. The prairie does not need a three foot by two foot cage. This is a massive cage for a prairie. So the prairie went to our three foot by 18 inch cage, cutting the space down considerably, but still plenty of room for a prairie, which means I had an open cage to bring one of my other rattlesnakes home that I have off site. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna put it in there. This is one of my more fiery rattlesnakes. Uh, I often get asked a lot actually, what do I recommend as a good first venomous snake? Well, you know, the standard answer is none, unless you've like thought through everything and, you know, had a little bit of practice and been around somebody who knows what they're doing a little bit and got a chance to learn. Now, if you've done all that and you're dead set on getting you a venomous snake, hey, who am I to judge? I got a bunch of them, right? I can't tell you not to, but I can give you my advice that I hear or what I think for a good first venomous. I hear all the time people say something like a Gaboon Viper. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. I think they can lull you into a false sense of security because they can be so docile. They strike a lot faster than people give them credit for. And if you get bit by one, well, if you're not prepared, you're pretty well screwed. Uh, my preference for a first venomous snake for anybody would be to get one that is a native species to the United States. The reason for that is because almost any hospital, uh, almost any hospital, and within a reasonable time frame, will be able to treat that because the medication is available here in the country. Makes sense. So uh, I would say Masseys are great. Banded rocks are pretty cool. Masseys are great for a first one. You know, even a Western Diamondback is appropriate for your first venomous snake. Now, Westerns have a reputation for being a little bit uh, feisty. Uh, that reputation can be true. I will tell you, there are ways to counteract that. If you have a captive bred Western, like my albino friend up here, how you doing, sweetie? Uh, actually, it's a male, so I should say, how you doing, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot more docile, typically, than if you have a wild caught. This one is a wild caught one. Now, we have this wild caught one because it's genetically interesting. Uh, it looks to be a hypomelanistic rattlesnake. So, you know, a lot less color on it. Very, very washed out. We were kind of calling it the acid project. I had never seen any before. Now, since then, I actually have seen some that have been produced. So I, well, I do think that lends it to this probably is genetic. It does make it where it's probably not as unique as I once thought. Um, people don't post rattlesnakes like they do ball pythons, y'all. So sometimes you don't run across those fast. But I have seen some similar to this one. So I do think they're out there. So let's show you how we do this. One, I got my tools, my trusty hook, trusty set of tongs, just in case anything goes horribly south. I've got a backup and Caleb with a hook over there, even though he's holding the camera. The snake is in the bucket. This is a good sized snake. We're gonna try to put the snake in the cage. That's what we're gonna do. First thing we do, open the bucket, right? Now, two things I can do, I can lift it off with the hook, or I can lift it off with my hand, using it as a shield. Chose that one. Show this thing in the bucket, Caleb. This thing is massive. So this is a big, thick, big rattlesnake, right? Big, big rattlesnake. Uh, nice and girthy, very healthy. You'll notice there's a dark spot on its back. That was there when we got it. That is necrotic tissue from taking a bite from another because where we got it, they had a bunch kept in one spot. And uh, this one was really interesting. So I said, hey, I want that. We worked out a deal and here it came. But that's always gonna be there. It is a scar, that's what it's from. They are not immune to their own venom. Now this snake would love nothing more than to bite the crap out of me. Come on, girly. I say girly, I don't really truly know. Get into the, you're not gonna do it, you're gonna go back in there. Okay, put your head back in there. No, <laughs> then put your head in here. Get your head in there. There you go, just like that. So the goal is to get it to go in there nice and gentle on its own. Go on. There you go. I knew if I got her by the tail, she's going to whip around on me. That's just her personality. So she is not one you can tail when her body's on the ground. But with that shield there, we of course can. And I'm going to let you get a little natural color on her before I close that up. 
you can kind of see how her color really is. Very, very nice looking snake. Uh, very, very beautiful in this light. I'm, I'm extremely excited to have this uh, <laughs> and watch her grow. I do think she's going to be female, and that's just based on size alone. So you can see we got a nice, really long, good rattle right there, right? We have about one, two, three, three-ish white bands. Uh, the old timers will tell you the number of white bands will tell you, eh, I don't think that's too exact. It deals with the, the number of scales from the tail back is why they're saying that. But in your rattlesnakes, your females are actually smaller than your males. It's opposite of like, say, your pythons, right? With her, which I hope to be female, we will test that later on. Uh, she is not super long, as you noticed, but she's very, very girthy, very, very thick. I mean, we've reached about the length we're probably going to get. We'll get a little longer as time goes, but not a lot. But we've, we're really thick, really strong snake. So that is why I hope she's female. God, she's so cool. I just, I'll be, you know, I love the ball pythons I work with. I truly do. But there is just something about these animals that just, I love these rattlesnakes. I, I really do. It's kind of a passion project for me. So let's go ahead and close you up. There you go, girl. We'll throw a lock on there, and we are, we are good. That is just picture perfect. Caleb, any questions about this girl? Nope. I keep saying girl. I guess I really don't know. Uh, so you've been around me for quite a while. <laughs> Our light just spun and highlighted the cameraman. It happens, you know. We're professionals here. And, and you've seen a lot of the rattlesnakes and worked with a lot of the rattlesnakes that we have, probably all of them. Yeah. And that includes, for people who don't know, albino, lavender albino. We did have a caramel albino that unfortunately passed away. We've had a scaleless before, hypermelanistic, purple haze, uh, different lines of normal albino, and this hypomelanistic. What would you say is your favorite one? Looks-wise, not personality-wise. Cool. We're just talking about looking at the snake and saying, hot damn. Uh, it's the same snake for me on both what is my favorite looking one as well as temperament wise. And that is the purple haze. The purple haze. The purple haze is a very gentle soul. You know, and for me, I, I go back and forth. Like I really like my, my wild caught special ones like this red one who's coming up to see me here. We hope you have babies this year. And this one are probably my two, my two favorites for look. Uh, otherwise it's probably the hyper melanistic, which is right there staring at you just cause I always wanted one of those. And, uh, uh, a guy that I have a, the utmost respect for in the hobby. And I'm not going to, well, I guess we filmed this place. So it came from Judd McClanahan. And for those that don't know Judd, you should know Judd because that guy's done more stuff in this hobby of reptiles than anybody realizes. And he's like the most humble dude who doesn't talk about it. If I did half the shit he did, man, I'd be up singing it from the mountain. And like most people don't even know, man. So uh, I have the utmost respect for Judd. And since that one came from him, that one also means a whole heck of a lot to me. All right, guys, that's all I got. That was easy. Man, oh, you are just so pretty. Yes, you are. Why did we, well, I guess I could cover one more thing. So one of the reasons why we want to bring her home first, other than some of the other ones, is because she is a wild-caught specimen. They do tend to be a little more aggressive. They don't necessarily take the captivity quite as well as many people looking at them. And she was on display. With her being on display, she eats really good. She, she does that wonderful. But she gets upset every time people come in. And uh, she has hit her face several times trying to bite things. So getting her removed first, where when it's here, she's going to see the same few people over and over again. And we'll get more and more used to them. As you can see, she's not too pissy right now. Um, it's not a constant set of new people coming in. We will hope to have less of that and let her live a much more relaxed and calm life, similar to what we've done with one of our red males who now doesn't stand up anymore. He's pretty chill. Uh, my red female, she's still a cranky bitch, but that is kind of how it goes. We're not even rattling now, are we? No, we're not. You did not like me touching you though. You, did, you told me no on that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.